Hey everybody, Tom Sparks with Sparks Media Group. Today I'm going to discuss the process of me scanning an entire baseball stadium. I scanned Oracle Park in San Francisco. Just some fun facts about the project. Uh, the stadium construction started in 1997 and was completed in 2000. It has a current seating capacity of 41,915 people. Um, and I was hired to scan the stadium by a client who just wanted an E57 data file uh, from the scan. They didn't need the entire ballpark scanned. Uh, we just scanned the entire bowl section where all the seats are. And then we scanned uh, a few other areas such as uh, the concourse levels, a few lounges, a uh, restaurant or two, uh, maybe a couple different suites. I used a combination of the Pro 3 camera to do the outside spaces and the majority of the ballpark and then we also used uh, the Pro 2 to do some of the interior spaces. Uh, with the Pro 3 we scanned a total of 17, well I provided 17 different tour links uh, for a total of 939 scans between the 17 tour links. Uh, with the Pro 2 we scanned and provided 8 tour links. Uh, with a total of 156 scans. So altogether that was 25 tour links with a total number of scan points between the two cameras at 1,095 scans. This process took three days to do. Uh, I was there all three days. I did bring in one of my photographers on the third day to assist with scanning some of the spaces just so we could uh, speed along with the process. Uh, the first two days I scanned was uh, seven hours each day. Um, I walked somewhere in the ballpark of 10 to 11,000 steps, according to the Apple Watch. Uh, roughly 20 to 40 flights of stairs climbed each day, and it was over five miles walked on each of those first two days. The third day was an additional seven hours for me, as well as four hours for my photographer who came to help out. Uh, and on that day, again, it was over 10,000 steps walked, I think uh, eight or nine flights of stairs climbed in total, and uh, about five and a half miles walked with the Apple Watch. So roughly 15 plus miles in the ballpark to scan. Um, I'm going to share some photos of the compiled E57 data from all the scans, or the ones that the client cared about. Uh, they were gracious enough to uh, combine some of the, the tour links and provide some screen grabs. So I'll, I'll share those with you. And I'll just kind of go over some of the issues that I had while scanning. Uh, this is a huge ballpark. There's a lot of repetitive spaces. And so we did run into some errors, and I'll talk about those. So in this particular view, you can see that most of the data has been combined. You'll see that uh, towards... Uh, the right side field in the upper reserve area, there's a big blank area missing. That's because the client felt that we didn't need to scan that area. They had enough data to replicate those areas. Um, also in the center of the field, there's a big black uh, hole. And that's because they were doing some work on the infield and we weren't able to get in those areas to fill that in. But it wasn't needed for uh, this particular client's usage. Uh, but yeah, this is a pretty good top-down view of what was scanned. Here's another view, kind of behind uh, center field, that shows uh, all that we were able to capture. Um, you'll see here that you got a full height from uh, the field all the way up to the upper reserve area. And you can see some gaps in the data where the Pro 3 wasn't able to capture. Uh, that band that's a, a big gap around the entire ring uh, is the suite level um, and we didn't go in every individual suite so we don't have data for those uh, levels there. Here's another view uh, behind left field and this is another good uh, representation of what I was able to scan in those two or three tour links uh, that they combined into one. Uh, here you can see the entire upper reserve except for the area to the left which I didn't scan at the client's request. You can see behind uh, the center field scoreboard, there's kind of a promenade area that I scanned. And yeah, this shows most of what I captured, uh, except for some of the interior spaces, which we provided separate tour links for. And this was enough data to give to the client um, so that they were able to use that data file for their needs. 
So let's discuss some observations I made while scanning. It's easier to start as low as possible in the ballpark and work your way up, ideally uh, starting on the field and working your way up from there. Uh, the Pro 3 can quote unquote see more data above it than it can below it, which would speed up the process and make alignments a lot easier. If you need one entire connected space, make sure that you plan your shoot before you start. Uh, know where the connecting areas are, example a stopped escalator or a pedestrian ramp. You're not able to scan and connect via elevators and so if that's the only uh, way from one area to another, then you're going to have to link them together with tags. Keep somewhat of a pattern. This will help keep you organized. If you're scanning every other aisle way, try to stick to that. And if you're scanning every tenth step or so, try to stick to that. Try to have uh, the mini-map as complete as possible for what your use case is. Know that the Pro 3 can often fill in more data than what's showing on the minimap, but the minimap is a good representation of what's being scanned. So if you're seeing a lot of black area on the minimap, make sure you fill that in uh, to your liking. Um, pay attention to alignment errors or misalignments. Uh, if you don't notice them, it can kind of start to get out of hand as you're going, so just pay attention to what you're scanning and what you're capturing as you go. You can use the beta version of the realignment tool, and that should work well for you. Um, I used mine maybe 20 or 30 times on this particular ballpark, and it only failed me maybe twice. And in that situation, I had to move the scan points uh, closer to the last good scan point until I didn't receive that misalignment error. Make sure you trim as you go. Um, stadiums are huge and it's more efficient to trim as you're going versus waiting until you get home and then trying to mark everything. Uh, you're going to miss a mirror or a window. Uh, it's, it's bound to happen just because of the size of the stadium. Make sure you bring uh, plenty of supporting accessories such as extra Pro 3 batteries, um, extra battery packs to keep your iPad or your phone device charged, uh, extra charging cables. Don't forget the necessities such as plenty of water, lunch, snacks, um, a hat, a jacket, layers. Uh, the first day I was there I didn't bring a lunch and I, I guess I just assumed that the ballpark would have food there and they didn't. Um, so I had to make my way back to the car and exit the stadium and then um, place a DoorDash order. And so just make sure you plan that out accordingly. Uh, water, you know, don't forget to stay hydrated. Um, have some snacks with you as you're scanning. I kept all my equipment in one area. And, you know, by the time I started scanning, I got pretty far away from it. So it was helpful to have some snacks on me, um, some gum or, you know, pretzels or whatever you want to chew on as you're scanning. Uh, and don't forget to stop to take a rest, um, take a break go to the bathroom, that sort of thing. Um, a lot of times we get uh, set in scanning and we don't want to stop. And I've definitely done, you know, seven, eight hour scans and taken very few breaks, but it's important to stop and kind of just, you know, refresh yourself, reassess the situation and then continue on. Uh, take cell phone photos of key areas and label them in notepad or some other way so that you can reference them later. Uh, as an example, if there's a particular name of a lounge that you need to tag on the tour later, you want to make sure you take a picture of that sign and note its location so that you can tag it on the tour later. And that's about it. So next we're going to talk about some use cases for why you would want to scan a stadium. Why would you want to scan a stadium? For architectural, engineering, and construction. Design and planning. Architects and engineers can use the virtual tour to visualize and plan the construction of the stadium. By having a detailed 3D model of the stadium, they can identify potential issues and make more informed decisions before construction begins. Project Management Construction managers can use the virtual tour to manage construction projects more effectively. By having a virtual model of the stadium, they can track progress and identify any issues that may arise during the construction process. 
quality control. Contractors and construction workers can use the virtual tour to ensure that construction is completed to the required standards. By comparing the virtual model to the actual construction, they can identify any discrepancies or areas that need to be improved. Safety. Construction workers can use the virtual tour to identify potential safety hazards and plan safety measures accordingly. By having a detailed 3D model of the stadium, they can anticipate potential risks and take steps to minimize them. As built documentation for a BIM file. Oftentimes there are missing blueprints and plans from when a stadium was built. Scanning a stadium will produce an as-built digital twin that can be used to generate data files and or BIM files. Overall, having a 3D virtual tour of a stadium can help construction teams manage projects more effectively, ensure quality control, and promote safety during the construction process. Training purposes. Having a 3D virtual tour of a stadium can be beneficial for training staff in several ways. Orientation. New staff members can use the 3D virtual tour to familiarize themselves with the layout and features of the stadium. By exploring the virtual model, they can get a sense of where different areas of the stadium are located, such as the field, locker rooms, concession stands, and seating sections. Safety training. Staff members can use the virtual tour to learn about safety procedures and protocols in the stadium. By seeing the stadium in a 3D model, they can identify potential hazards and practice safety drills in a controlled environment. Event planning. Staff members responsible for planning events at the stadium can use the virtual tour to get a better sense of the available spaces and seating options. This can help make more informed decisions about event layout ticketing, and concessions. Customer service. Staff members who interact with visitors can use the virtual tour to gain a better understanding of the stadium and provide more accurate and helpful information to visitors. By having a virtual model of the stadium, they can answer questions about seating, directions, and amenities more confidently and effectively. Overall, having a 3D virtual tour of a stadium can be a useful tool for staff training and development. By providing a comprehensive and interactive view of the stadium, staff members can become more knowledgeable and confident in their roles, leading to better customer service and a more enjoyable experience for visitors. Facilities Management Scan the stadium and tag key pieces of equipment such as generators, boilers, electronics, etc with links to the products, repair manuals, or instructional videos. 3D virtual tours allow the viewer to view these tags, take on screen measurements of items such as windows, doors, and walls to get accurate measurements. By having a virtual model of the stadium, it can be easier to identify areas that need repairs or upgrades or to plan for maintenance tasks. Vendor use. Stadiums are large. It's easy to get lost. Provide a vendor a link to the 3D virtual tour to a specific pathway from parking to the place they need access to. This can help ensure that people are where they need to be and not get lost. Insurance purposes, risk assessment. Insurance companies need to assess the risk associated with insuring a stadium. By having a 3D virtual tour of the stadium, they can get a better sense of the layout, design, and potential hazards that might be present. This can help them make a more accurate risk assessment and determine appropriate insurance premiums. Claims Management If there is damage or a loss to the stadium, having a 3D virtual tour can be useful for insurance claims management. Insurance adjusters can use the virtual model to assess the extent of the damage and determine the scope of repairs that are needed. This can help streamline the claims process and ensure that the repairs are completed more quickly. Compliance and safety. Insurance companies may require stadiums to meet certain safe safety standards and compliance regulations in order to be insured. By having a 3D virtual tour of the stadium, insurance companies can ensure that these standards are being met and identify any areas of concern that they may need to be addressed. Overall, having a 3D virtual tour of a stadium can help insurance companies make more informed decisions about risk assessment, 
claims management, and compliance. By providing a detailed and accurate representation of the stadium, it can help ensure that the insurance policies are appropriate and that any issues are addressed promptly. Marketing and promotion. A 3D virtual tour of a stadium can be used to showcase the facility to potential visitors or clients. This can be especially useful for event planners who may want to see the space before booking it for a wedding, corporate event, or other gathering. Fan engagement. Sports teams and stadiums can use 3D virtual tours to engage with fans who are unable to attend games in person. By offering a virtual tour of the stadium, fans can get a sense of what it's like to be at the game and explore different areas of the facility. Historical preservation. For historic stadiums or venues, a 3D virtual tour can be a way to preserve the space for future generations. By creating a detailed model of the stadium, it can be possible to capture the unique architecture, design, and features of the facility that might otherwise be lost over time. Emergency preparedness. Having a 3D virtual tour of a stadium can be useful for emergency preparedness in several ways. Pre-planning. Emergency responders and stadium management can use the virtual tour to pre-plan emergency response procedures. By having a detailed 3D model of the stadium, they can identify potential hazards and plan evacuation routes and emergency response strategies. Training. Emergency responders can use the virtual tour to train for emergency scenarios. By simulating emergency situations in the virtual model, responders can practice their response strategies in a controlled environment. Communication. During an emergency, responders and stadium management can use the virtual tour to communicate more effectively. By having a shared virtual model of the stadium, they can coordinate response efforts and provide clear instructions to staff and visitors. Risk Assessment Stadium management and emergency responders can use the virtual tour to assess potential risks and plan appropriate responses. By identifying potential hazards and simulating emergency scenarios, they can plan for a range of potential emergencies and develop effective response plans. Overall, having a 3D virtual tour of a stadium can help emergency responders and stadium management prepare for emergencies more effectively by identifying potential risks, simulating emergency scenarios, and coordinating response efforts, they can minimize the impact of emergencies and ensure the safety of staff and visitors. So now we'll take a look at some of the scan data from the Matterport app. Here I'll go over a little bit about where I scanned and why. The client needed a data file of the entire bowl of the stadium, which included basically all of the seats from the field all the way up to the nosebleed section. And so what I did was scanned every other aisle almost to capture a good representation of all the seats. Uh, in some cases, I had to scan every aisle um, just because of issues with uh, alignment errors and misalignments. But uh, in a lot of cases, I was able to scan every other aisle, which made the process go a lot quicker uh, than if I hadn't been able to do that. You can see around this curve section, I scanned every aisle way. Uh, the scans were spaced out roughly about every 10 steps. Um, so you can see 63, 64, 66, 67 are all about 10 steps or so. Uh, but I had to scan every aisle because uh, the way the curve was, um, it was helpful in getting accurate coverage of everything. Now I'm showing this scan a little out of order. Uh, this was actually the second day of scanning and I started uh, on the field and did the perimeter first. Um, the first day I had to start in the upper reserve which was the nosebleed seats 
top of the park. Uh, and I had to do that because there were some field access issues that I wasn't able to get on the field the first day. Uh, but, you know, going forward, I think it would have been way easier to start on the field because the camera can see better going up than it can going down, uh, which means that I would have had probably less alignment issues if I started lower and worked my way up. Um, but yeah, this is kind of just the perimeter of the park. Again, capturing all the seats. Now for the use case of why the client hired me to do this scan, uh, it didn't require capturing the entire field. However, I thought it would be really cool to try to get the entire field. So I did start to try to get some of the outfield and work my way in. However, they were doing a lot of work on the infield and I wasn't able to get around the perimeter of the bases. So that's why you see this black hole area. Now this we're calling the second floor, which included all of the concession areas for the lower level. Uh, and I was able to get a nice ring around the park um, on the second floor level. Now, this scan was actually taken uh, the first day, and you can see on the top right is scan number one. This was the upper reserve, um, or as I call it, the nosebleed seats. And this is where I had to start. Uh, all this entire tour uh, that you see here of these scans, 255 in total, uh, I was able to accomplish on the first day with I think it took about seven hours. Um, there was another section that I'll show you next that was also included in that first day, but this was a lot of space. The reason there's a lot of scans in this upper reserve area is I was getting a lot of alignment errors and misalignments where it was putting scan points uh, of where I was at in locations where I'd previously been. And I had to use the um, manual alignment tool, which I think is still in beta testing, um, to realign the scans. And I'd say out of about 20 or so scans that I had to realign manually, uh, that it worked successfully I think all but maybe two or three times, um, but it did add a little bit of time on to doing this. Now as I got over towards the right side of the stadium, um, I stopped and that was an executive decision made by uh, myself and the client based on timing. Uh, we felt that we had enough data in this area to duplicate um, the data and fill it in as needed, uh, which meant that I didn't need to continue scanning on. Uh, this was at the end of a, I think a seven, seven and a half hour day. Uh, and the contact at the ballpark who was guiding me around, uh, needed to leave. So we had to wrap up this day and, and do a hard stop. I could have picked up where I left off the next day, but I figured at some point, hopefully I'll be back and I can kind of fill this in just to satisfy my own desire to have a completed tour. Now this is the level that you walk in on before you go up to the nosebleed seats. And I think they call it the view box reserve. So there's about two or three rows of seats um, in front of this walkway. And uh, Behind all these seats is the upper 
concession area, which we didn't need to scan. Um, I did scan 185 through 190 uh, to go towards an escalator, thinking that I would connect uh, this upper area to the lower area, uh, but we didn't end up needing to do that. So that's why you see very few scans in those areas. I didn't get a lot of uh, misalignments in these areas. However, there was a lot of scans just because um, I was scanning, you know, for example, where 44 is, that's to show uh, the hallway that goes out to the um, concession area. But 45 is to show the start of some steps. So is 43, I think. So there was a lot of um, scans close together just to show pathways up to certain areas. And it did uh, add a little bit of time to the, to the scanning to have so many scan points in there. This is the club level. And as you can see, it's a new tour. Uh, there's about 50 scans in this area. And it wasn't accessible via a connected pathway to the previous scans. I had to come out of a, a doorway and then make a pathway down a, a row and you can see in scans 39 38 and 37 that kind of exemplifies that uh, and then I just did a perimeter scan around the edge of the balcony and that's what we're gonna see here it is interesting that by putting the camera at the edge of the railing you are able to get a lot of data into the lower area as you can see in the mini map So here's the process tour that Matterport provided. This is just one of the tour links which covered the lower bowl. Those first uh, two floors is what I called them. Uh, and you can see the, the black hole in the field area where the camera didn't pick up. Um, and you can see a few gaps in, in data, a few black areas. Uh, that might have been covered on other scans. This particular one here in the center was um, uh, like a tower inside that concession area, so there wasn't any way to get that data uh, because it wasn't what the client needed. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much the entire one scan. This was the 360 scan portion of the tour. You can see a part of the scoreboard that it did capture just by being on the field area. So there we have it. That is the show. Hopefully this video was useful and you guys learned something from it. Uh, I know I did putting it together. Um, I have a lot of use cases now to present to ballparks, to uh, theater venues, um, to any kind of public space really. Uh, all these use cases apply to that. Uh, so if you have any questions, comment them below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you don't like it, still give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. Uh, if you find my videos useful, share them. And if you find my channel useful, feel free to subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Alright guys, well, that's it. Thanks for watching.